Welcome back to another episode of Mr. Run Rocks. In this episode, we're going to make this track. In a previous episode, I made a track that looked very different. The problem was it had so many polygons, so many verts, that it was really difficult. It got to the point where it was difficult to manipulate, and my machine started uh, becoming kind of sluggish. So I'm going to make this particular tread. It has far fewer uh, verts, and um, I made the wheels different. Also, notice the gears are on the inside, and the gear notches actually match the little notches on the side of uh, this guy on the inside. So these little uh, bumps on the inside match these grooves, and then the uh, kind of these things that stick out alongside sort of match the wheel shape. And I like the way this looks. So we're going to use this in the robot, but uh, before we get there, we're going to we're going to rig him. Actually, we can see how this guy is rigged right now. Uh, we're going to start back from scratch. But if I grab this box and I move him, notice that the wheels turn and the track turn all together and we'll be able to put this on our robot and our robot will have uh, that movement animation built in. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and make the wheel. We're going to do that first so that I can when I build the uh, track it's going to fit perfectly into the wheel. I will simply add a circle and uh, I'm going to go ahead and say I want 12 sprockets. I'm going to have four spaces uh, for each one or four segments for each one. So I'll simply say uh, four times eight which gives me 48 and now um, that's ready to go. Uh, if I look in here a little bit closer, I can tab into uh, edit mode and I want to choose lines and so if I go over here to select and then check or deselect, this is already bumped up to four. Uh, I think the default is two, so I'm going to bump it up to four. Each of these segments is going to have, each um, little notch sticking out is going to have four segments associated with it. Let's go ahead and look at it from the top by hitting seven and uh, I realize I don't have my screencast keys on, so let me just turn those on real quickly, and uh, that's good to go. Um, I also need to, let me change the color, and I will put, let's see, text on, and I need to bump that up on the y-axis, and I guess the text is big enough. Let me change the text to 30 there just to be safe. Okay, so now that I've got that all set up, I'm going to go ahead and say extrude, I'm sorry, scale, and I'm just going to scale that straight out, and I want those little notches uh, to sort of match the shape on the inside is going to match the shape that I have on my uh, tank track. Um, so I'll leave it like that, and I will select all, and now this guy's ready to extrude up. So if I say extrude, and then on the z-axis, this guy comes right up, and that's the shape that I'm going to use to build uh, the notch, and so I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees on the x-axis, hit enter, and that looked terrible because I only had part of this guy selected. Let me go ahead and select all and try that again. I'm going to say uh, rotate 90 on the x-axis, and now I'm ready to begin to build this. If I look at this though, I'll notice that it's not um, just showing up uh, right on top. So I'm going to rotate him a little bit more so that that notch goes right in the middle there. And now I'm ready to go ahead and build my notch. Notice that I'm in object mode. I'm going to go ahead and put a cube in here. Uh, I'll raise that up. And so I'm going to try to build my track so that it matches this in size and shape. So I'll go ahead and uh, bring it in so it's roughly the same width this way. I'll scale it way down on the z-axis. And um, on, let's see, I'll also scale it down quite a bit on the x-axis and I'll build my track starting with this guy. Now as I come in here, I realize that my track is going to have a notch kind of coming out of the middle of it like that. So um, I can even actually bring this in just a bit more. And uh, let's go ahead now and uh, uh, begin building this. I'm going to use a mirror modifier for this guy. And I'm going to mirror him down uh, this way. So uh, to do this, he's going to be symmetrical, so it'll save me a little bit of time if I do this. I'm going to tab into edit mode, I'm going to simply put a loop cut right in the middle, and then I'm going to cut out half of this guy. So again, I go into transparency, deselect everything, box select just those four verts, and if I hit X, I can delete those vertices. I come over here and I'm going to add a mirror modifier, and the mirror modifier is right here. Now it doesn't show up because I'm mirroring over the X axis, and I want to mirror along the Y axis. Y is green, X is red. So if I unclick that and click that guy, it shows up. And I make sure 
that I turn on clicking. Now at this point I need some more loop cuts in here. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of loop cuts in this way again. Uh, the thing that I failed to do last time was I made a, a track with way too many uh, vertices. So I'm going to scale this guy out on the x-axis a little bit and uh, I'm going to try to make this as a few verts as possible. I'm just going to put in one loop cut here and now I'm going to turn off my um, transparency and I'll begin to shape this guy as I want. So I want this part to stick out. I'm simply going to scale him out. I'll say extrude on the X and every time I extrude I'm making a whole new set of verts. I want to be careful to do as little of that as possible. Scale him on the Y, scale him perhaps on the Z and I will bring him up so he's kind of level and that's the shape I want. On this end I want these to fit together like puzzle pieces so I'm going to simply scale this guy out on the X but I want this shape to be matched over here and so uh, what I need to do is I need to bring in this guy scale him a little bit actually I think I'll make this smaller first so I'll scale him on the Y and uh, maybe bring him in and now this guy I'm going to scale on the Y as well well and I want these two guys to look like this piece is going to fit inside this piece I think this guy can come in a bit more so I'm just kind of tweaking this a little bit and uh, I can always go back and do this later I want now down on the bottom I want these guys to make this little groove so I'm going to ex um, extrude this on the Z axis and I'll bring it down right on the Z and I'll begin to scale this on the Z X axis and I'll bring this down now and I want to see how closely this matches and I'm just going to try to get it to fit uh, as close as I can into that little groove so already it's uh, not too bad but uh, as I bring him down in, I can see that um, I need to oh a number of things. So I think I'll scale this whole guy down and uh, scale the whole thing out a little bit on the Z. And now I think I'll just take these faces on the inside and uh, scale them. Those let's see that guy and that guy. And uh, looking straight down here again, I'm going to see that uh, it's a little bit a little bit wider so I'm going to scale him on the x-axis and I'll try to get the same roughly the same shape okay that's looking pretty good uh, looks like the whole thing might scale out a little bit on the X and I'm getting something that I think is pretty close maybe scale it a little bit more on the X okay so those two shapes look like they're pretty good to me. I'm also going to add one more loop cut down the middle here. And so I want this to come up. And so uh, turning off my transparency again and choosing my face select, I'm going to choose these two guys and actually maybe these two guys as well. And I will uh, extrude that on the Z. And then I'm going to take these two guys and I'll extrude those on the Z. And uh, I'll scale these four guys down. scale these two guys down even more and uh, that's looking okay to me scale on the X and push that in maybe I'll push these guys over this way and that's looking okay all right I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that actually this one line I don't like the way that kind of moved in so I think I'll just move that back out a bit make those edges a little bit straighter and now finally I want uh, this guy to come down um, he's going to match sort of the, the tread, but for right now I'll just go ahead and extrude him on the y-axis. I will scale the whole thing down and uh, eventually um, scale him even more on the z. Uh, and eventually this guy is going to be pointing down like that, but I'll leave him up here for now. Uh, same thing over here. These two guys are going to, uh, this guy's going to scale on the z. Bring him back up. And you know, if I wanted to, I could make it look like this guy's coming in a bit. So if I add a loop cut here, I can come over to um, this guy and I could extrude him on the Y axis and bring that guy in. Now, to see what this is going to look like, to see if this all looks like it's fitting together pretty well, I can come back out here and it looks like it fits into my gear pretty well. And uh, this is a lot bigger than I had wanted it to be, but let's go ahead and simply apply that mirror modifier and then I'm going to come back to this. Um, 
the number of verts I have is far fewer than I had before. So if I were to take this guy out for, um, let's move him to another, uh, let's move him to another guy, and I see that, um, well, I guess that didn't change. It has 124 faces. I think that refers to both. But in any case, let's go ahead and uh, add the array modifier, and I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm going to put this on the, let's see, I've got my, oh, sorry, I'm going to select this guy, add an array modifier, and so I can see how those guys fit together, and I'm just going to bring this guy in, and so those guys are going to fit together like that, so it kind of looks like that guy is um, affecting it. If I want to come back in here, uh, I can still play around with this and change the shape of some of these things. Like if I bring that down, I get a little bit more of an uh, interesting shape there. And uh, I guess I still had um, those two interfaces selected, so now I'm going to select these over again, bring that down, and... Uh, huh. Maybe I did want those guys to come down a bit, so maybe... Um, if I deselect everything, uh, go into transparency, I can box select these guys, and I'll just bring those guys down a bit. And so that is beginning to look pretty good to me. So now if I simply bump up the count of this guy, I can see that that's going to begin to look like a tank track, and uh, that's what my tank track is going to look like. So let's go ahead and grab this wheel and bring it back in. And I can see I added the uh, modifier to this guy. So let's get rid of the modifier here. Whoops. Let's get rid of the modifier on this guy. So I will get rid of him. And now I want to move him back. So I'll hit M to go to move layer. And I'll come back to this layer. If I come down here and go back to that layer, these guys are back together. And I can see how that's going to fit together. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish making my wheel. Let's go ahead and move this guy up for now, and I'm going to simply uh, rotate this guy on the x-axis 90 degrees, and I want to start working from here. Um, looks like he's moved over a bit. Let's go ahead and double check that we have uh, the origin. I went to transform, object transform, origin to geometry, and now I can say shift S, and I can go uh, selection back to cursor, which is at the center, so now this guy is centered. In any case, if I come in here at this point, I want to begin to make uh, the rest of this shape. And the trouble with doing it this way is that I want the uh, two sides to be roughly similar, but they don't have to be identical. One's going to be facing the outside of the um, robot, the other's going to be facing the inside, so they really don't have to be identical. I could have done them identical if I'd wanted, but I think this is going to be okay. So I'm going to simply say, um, first of all, extrude and then scale. And again, I can see I have that funny shape. But if I come back over here to select and go to check or deselect again and scale this guy in, I can get my round kind of faces or round shape back. And now if I alt select this guy and I extrude and scale in, that's going to be, uh, that's going to look fine. Okay, now this is going to be kind of a round part. So I'm going to say uh, extrude and scale out. And I'm going to extrude on the Z. I'm going to uh, extrude on the Z again, and this time I'm going to start scaling in a bit. Extrude on the Z, and I'll scale in quite a bit. Extrude, and now just scale in. Extrude on the Z, scale back down. And extrude and scale. And um, a little hub in the middle, so I'll extrude on the Z, and I'll extrude and just scale that guy in. So that's going to be that shape. If I turn off the transparency and look at this guy, I can see that he's looking okay. If I want to see what it looks like with smooth shading at this point, I can come back here and turn on smooth shading. And you can see everything gets rounded. But uh, that's optional. And uh, it does get rid of the facets, but it does give it some kind of strange appearance. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side now. I come back in here. Again, I'm going to Alt Select, Alt Right Click that line, and I'll get all of these guys. So I'll do the same thing I did before. I'm going to extrude and then scale in. I can come back to uh, check or deselect, scale that guy in. Uh, if I choose that full circle, 
Uh, looks like that's not really quite round, maybe there. And now I'm going to go ahead and say um, Alt Select Extrude uh, on the Z, bring it out a little bit. And uh, I can make another round shape here. So I'll say Extrude um, and I'll, s oops, Extrude and Scale. I'll bring that down. And I want it to be roughly the same as uh, the dimensions of uh, the sprockets themselves. And so extrude on the Z, bring it out a little bit more. Uh, extrude on the Z, and then I'm going to start bringing it in. Extrude on the Z, but I'll start bringing it way in. Extrude on the Z, bring it in more. And this guy's not going to have uh, a lot going on in terms of the hub, so I'll just simply extrude that. Whoops, I'm going to extrude and then scale that guy in. And I'll extrude it on the Z, bring it in, and scale it there. Okay, so that's going to be the basic shape. I don't like the fact that these are so different, but that's not a problem. If I just come back into box select, I can take uh, all of this, and I can take all of that, and I can begin to scale that. If I say Shift Z, it'll just scale it on the X and um, Y values. And so that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that. In any case, that's my uh, wheel for the uh, robot tr tread, or, tr or wheels rather, and the uh, track is going to fit nicely around that. So let's go ahead and uh, rotate this on the uh, x-axis uh, 90 degrees. And now I want to shape my tread so that it's going around all of this. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say Shift S, and I'm going to take this guy and say Selection Back to Cursor. So it's right at the center, and then when I add my Bezier circle, or this curve, I think it's pronounced Bezier, so I'm not adding a mesh circle, I'm adding a Bezier circle, and if I add that, uh, rotate him on the x-axis 90 degrees, I can tab into edit mode, I can scale this guy up a bit, and I can grab these handles and begin moving them out. Now both the tread and the curve are centered um, on the um, on the cursor there, so they both have the same center point, and that's going to make life a little bit easier later on. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and move these guys in a bit. Um, I can take these two endpoints if I want to tighten this, and I can scale him on the x-axis. And if I want to, I can take this and this, and if I want a little kind of a different curve here, I want this to sag in a bit. I can simply go to W, I can subdivide that and get this new guy right here, and I can grab him and move him in, okay? Maybe um, play around with these guys a little bit, but uh, I'll just leave it like that for now. And for here and here, again, W, subdivide, and I get this guy in the middle, and I'm going to bring him down, I'm going to bring him in, and so that's looking pretty good. Now I want to go ahead and attach this to my curve, and so to do that, that's going to be fairly simple. Um, actually, before I do that, uh, I think what I'll do is I will kind of move this into position and just see that it, it's the right shape. If I want to change its size at this point, it actually helps since this uh, notch in the middle is fitted to this wheel perfectly. If I change the size of the wheel, it might be easier if I have these two guys kind of moving together. So I'll take this guy again, I'll say Shift S, uh, Selection to Cursor. And s ooh, I have moved the cursor. Sorry about that. I'm going to say cursor to center. Then I'll take this guy and say selection to cursor. And so now I'm going to attach this. And so let's give this guy a name. I'm going to come over to um, here. I'm going to go to item. I'm going to say tread curve, uh, track curve, or whatever. And this guy is going to be my track. So I will simply give him the name track. And now they have uh, their names, and so all I need to do is, uh, for this guy, I'm going to come and add another modifier. This time I'm going to add a curve modifier. Notice I have the track selected. I'm adding a curve modifier, and I'm going to select the track curve as the object to wrap around. And so now it's beginning to wrap around that curve. It's not long enough yet, and so if I come over here, I'm simply going to bump up the number of, or the count, for this guy, and I'll get that thing 
and I want these guys to fit together so that last one just to make sure they're fitting correctly I will scale this guy up a little bit or, or move it tweak it so that it looks like it's matching all the rest and that guy's good to go so now if I were to move its location notice I'm not moving its rotation it's rotating when I move its location because its location is being transformed around that shape now at this point this guy is going to um, want to move also and so what I'll do at this time is uh, I'm going to get rid of this lights or move it up out of the way a little bit and I'm going to take this whole piece here so I will take deselect everything box select all of this stuff and I'm just going to move it off to the side just a bit and now if I deselect that I hit shift a I want to add an empty and so the empty I'm going to add is a cube and I'm going to scale that guy down a little bit over here uh, on my end tab I want to give him a name so I'll come back up to item and I'm going to call this guy I don't know maybe I'll call him box so uh, at that point that guy is going to be called box and I'm going to parent that all of these guys to that box you can see that my wheel is sticking out a little bit further than it needs to so I'm going to select this guy and scale him down a little bit on the y-axis that doesn't change that shape for the um, this little piece that fits into these notches and so um, I'm going to go ahead and take all of this stuff and I'm going to box select this whole thing and I'm going to then shift select this say control P and I'm going to keep my transform and now everything is apparent to this huh that doesn't look like it is parented to this let's try that again I'll say shift P or control P and I'm not getting I'm not seeing it anyway well let's see if it all moves together so I'm going to grab this guy and if I move him yeah everything does move together so not exactly sure what's going on there in any case oh I guess because the origin is here it's just going right down that axis I didn't notice that okay so at this point uh, what I can do is I can take this say shift uh, shift D and then move it along the x-axis and I get another wheel here shift D move it along the x-axis and then I'll move it up the y-axis and so I have my three wheels I should give these guys names I'm just gonna see how things are going to move uh, we're running out of time so I'm gonna put the um, next driver part of this and moving all these things together in the next video so let's go ahead and give this guy a name we'll just call him W1 and I'll call this guy uh, W2 and I'll have this guy we'll call him W3 and uh, essentially uh, I'm not going to worry about materials or anything right now uh, the one other thing that I do want to do though is the wheels are looking a little bit big still and so I should have taken care of that maybe before we did all this but let's go ahead and uh, if I have my track selected and I tab back into edit mode notice this guy is uh, ready to be still manipulated however I want to and I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to just drop this down more if I want to add uh, another loop cut in here I can put that and so if I do this now it's going to kind of bend even more and uh, begin to see what that's going to look like in any case let's go ahead and tab back out it looks like that's wrapping around the wheel pretty well I still think the wheel is needs to be scaled down a little bit on the y-axis oh notice also that those changes I made over here didn't happen over here because I've removed that um, mirror modifier in any case I'm not gonna put that in the video but I can go ahead and tweak the other edge make sure these things are all adjusted pretty well but that's the basic idea if I were to move this guy now notice it all moves together and if I were to take this guy and move its location that moves I was take this guy and rotate him on the y-axis that moves and so I'm going to set up the drivers in the next video so this all moves together